I know that pushing your MCAT back can feel like it's the absolute last thing that you want to do, not only because you're aware that the earlier you apply to medical school, the better chance you have of getting accepted, but also you're just ready to be done with this stinking test. My name's John, I'm a medical student. I spent several years as a professional MCAT tutor, and now I have this channel which gives away some free resources for those trying to study for the MCAT. My goal for you all as well as everybody that I have in the past personal tutored was first and foremost, you've got to get the score that you have to get in order to get into medical school. That's goal number one. But a close second is I want you to do that as quickly and as painlessly as possible. I don't want you spending too much time on this test. So let's talk about when you should reschedule and when you should push your test back. Because not everybody should, but some people should. In my experience, there's two types of test takers or two types of people that are considering whether or not they should push their test back. The first are the students that are very eager to push their test back. Sometimes these students are eager to push their test back because they know they haven't done the work. Those people probably should push their test back. But also, sometimes pe students are eager to push their test back because they're just anxious. And a lot of times those people just need to go ahead and take it because they're scoring great. The other type of person, the other mindset that you'll encounter is the type of individual that would rather <laughs> shave their head than freaking push that test back. A lot of times that's just because they're kind of burnt out and they are ready to be done with this test. But also a lot of those people are just scared that if they do push the test back, then they're gonna let down their family or their friends or their selves and they're never gonna be a doctor and they're just gonna have to work at the local fast food restaurant for the rest of their life, et cetera, et cetera. Most people, myself included, will be one or both of those mindsets throughout their MCAT journey, if you wanna call it that. But I wanna tell you why pushing your test might be necessary and when that is necessary, regardless of which kind of type you are. There's two major variables to consider as far as when to take your MCAT, and those variables are score and application timing. As most of you know, you can find the average MCAT for the schools you are interested in applying to either on their website or on the MSAR, which is a program through the AAMC. You can just Google AAMC MSAR, which is M-S-A-R. And this will show a list of the average MCATs alongside their, the average GPA for those that get accepted into those medical schools. And you should make a list of target schools that you want to go to. And at the top of that list, you should have REACH schools, which will be schools like Harvard or Vanderbilt, or those that are very difficult to get into that have very high MCAT scores. And then you should also have some quote unquote safety schools, which are going to be a little bit lower, which are going to have average MCATs and or GPAs that are a little bit lower than the Ivy Leagues and things of that nature. Now it's important to know what score you're aiming for because that's gonna kinda dictate whether or not you need to push as I'm about to describe to you. If we look at the two variables you need to consider when deciding should I push my test or not, now you obviously want to score higher on your real MCAT than your safety school's average MCAT score. But how do you figure out what you're probably gonna make on the MCAT? The best way to do it is to take your past three MCAT exams, past three full length exams, average them and say plus or minus two or three. Meaning if I took three exams, one of them was a 509, one was a 510, and one was a 511, I would average those three and my average would be a 510. So over the last three exams, I have averaged a 510. So the score range that I'm probably going to make on test day is going to be somewhere between a 507 and a 513 barring some kind of like test taking anxiety or something of that nature. So I like for my students and I liked for myself to be at least two points higher on average, the accumulative average of those final three, I wanted it to be at least two points higher than the lowest MCAT score on my target list. Otherwise, you need to push. Now I know that we've all heard stories of friends and we've seen it on Reddit where somebody was averaging a 502 and then they took the real test and they made a 511 and they're like, Hey, I just wanted to come to Reddit to say that this whole thing's a sham and that real test is actually super easy. That does not happen very often. Scores are much more likely, or at least I've seen them, go in the other direction, large jumps, than they do in the positive direction. So if you're not within that range that I just described, 
you should really consider pushing your test back. So you have to weigh this idea of I'm trying to reach a certain score threshold versus the timing of your test and the application process that kind of goes along with the test. For those of you that don't know, it takes about a month to process your applications once you click submit. It also takes about a month to grade the MCAT once you click submit. So most people try to have their MCAT taken and their application submitted on the first day that it opens up and that considers you a quote unquote early applicant, meaning you are the first pile of applicants that comes across the admissions committee's desks. Not everybody does that, but that's what a lot of people strive for. The later you get into the application cycle, the less likely that it is that you will get accepted into medical school because admissions committees interview on a rolling basis, meaning that at the beginning there's 150 slots, so they're more likely to hand out interviews to a good applicant, whereas as we get to the end and they've already filled 140 slots, they're probably going to save those last 10 for really great applicants. So yes, there is an advantage to testing early if you're within that sweet spot that I described earlier. But if you're not, if you're going to take the test and you're going to make a 502 and your safety school's average MCAT score is a 509, you're probably not going to get an interview. So that means you're going to be retaking the MCAT, reapplying next cycle. So let me give you a little bit of a personal anecdote about a guy, a little boy named John. He had a goatee. He was still in, in its infancy stages back then. He took the MCAT and ended up making a 502, which was not great. It was kind of respectable. Went ahead and applied to medical school anyways. Ended up, I got waitlisted, which I thought was better than getting rejected. But I didn't find out until the next May that I had been rejected from medical school. And so I didn't know until May that I needed to retake the MCAT. Well, by the time you retake the MCAT, or by the time you realize you have to retake the MCAT, well, now it's kind of too late to study properly. So then I tried to shotgun up another MCAT prep in like a month so that I wasn't super late in the application cycle the following year and ended up making a 502 again because I only gave myself a month to do it. And so I did learn my lesson, obviously, i.e. this channel and, and did it the right way. But long story short, because I didn't have the foresight to realize, hey, I'm way below the average here. I'm probably not going to get in. I just need to do this right and push my exam back. I ended up having to take two gap years. So I'm starting third year this year. I could either be starting my last year of medical school or I could already be a doctor if I had just had the foresight to do it properly the first time and been able to, mine was personally ego, been able to drop my ego and just push my test date back. So the overarching answer of should I push my test date back, if your average MCAT score is nowhere close to the score that you need in order to get an interview at one of these schools, then yes, you should push your test back. Scores are not gonna jump 15 points in a month. Scores are not gonna jump five points in two weeks. It's just not gonna happen usually. Sometimes it can. If you've laid the foundation properly, then it can. But usually, if you're at a 502 and you've got a week and a half to get to a 509, that's not gonna happen. So that's an individual that should push their test date back. Now, what about the individual that needs a 510 to get into their safety school and they already have a 516 but they want to go to a school with an average MCAT of a 518 and they have two weeks to study. They should not push their test back. Number one, you are high enough for your safety school. Number two, you have a high enough MCAT already that the people at the 518 school they know that you're smart enough to handle the coursework, so they're really not worried about it. They'd be happy to take a 516, and they probably do take several 516s. They just have a couple 526s to balance it out. So that person would have a much better chance of getting into school if they applied early rather than if they beefed their MCAT score up to a 522. So it is a balancing act of giving myself more time to study. How much will that impact my score? So you have to figure out 
is applying early with the score you have now make you a better applicant than applying later with a slightly higher score. If you can jump eight points in that time, then apply later. But if you think that I'm going to make a 506 on June the 1st and I'm going to make a 508 on June the 30th, then you should test on June the 1st because a 506 is still a pretty good score. It's about the same as a 508. If you think you're going to make a 506 on June the 1st and a 514 on June the 30th, you should test on June the 30th because it's a big gap. So see how much or try to guesstimate how much improvement you can make in those in the time that you're pushing back to decide whether or not you should push. A good way to guesstimate this is by seeing how much you have and have not done, meaning how have I taken a bunch of practice tests? Have I watched IFD's videos on strategies? Have I watched uh, the video that I made on like what your final month should look like and have you done that? Because you can make some really big leaps in that final month if you are crazy diligent about it. But if you have been doing everything and you're still struggling to break a 500 or a 502 and you just realize that there are content gaps left and right that you have, well, you're just going to need more time. You just have to have more time. And you should probably go ahead and push the test back to next January and focus on making a crazy good score on January so you can choose where you want to go to medical school. And then hopefully, like myself and like Maggie, you'll get a scholarship to go to medical school. And you won't have to be in a ton of debt, all because you made the mature decision that I'm not ready yet, but I will be ready. I just need more time. It's a very sobering thought to think about having to push back your MCAT, but it's also a very individual decision that you and, and your family need to make together. Now, there's a little caveat there of don't let your parents rush you into taking that test. If you're not ready, because you will fail it, and it will go on your application. And it's not a death sentence, but it sure don't look good. Because even if you jump 20 points in between it, the admissions committee is going to look at it and be like, did you go into the MCAT unprepared? Did you think this was going to be a cakewalk? And maybe that could look a little bit arrogant to them. If you have the scores and you need permission to go ahead and stay your test date confidently, then this is it. You're going to crush the test, and I'm excited for you. And you're about to be done. But if you also need permission to take just as brave a step, to reschedule the exam, and this is also your permission. Sometimes you just need more time, and it doesn't make you stupid, that doesn't make you lazy, but it does end up making you a doctor. And the good news is that this time around, you're gonna have myself, you're gonna have Maggie, you're gonna have all the videos that we post on this channel, and in a year's time, you won't be nearly as stressed out because you'll have had the hardest part of getting into medical school already knocked out. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.